I met Jim Farley in December 1979. He was still on the sunny side of 40, even though some of us have the impression that he's been 55 forever. He was coordinating the Rhodes Scholarship selection process for Ontario. There were about a dozen candidates, I was one of them, and he managed somehow, and I think this is a pattern, to be very likable and utterly terrifying all at once. He's had an exemplary career, particularly um, as a judge in commercial matters, where I think he's really revered, and uh, he's always been a big supporter of the law school. He comes to events, he encourages people to come to events, he's keen to contribute in any way he can, and he's a lot of fun. Jim is fearless of making decisions. As it happens, he tends to be right more often than not. When Justice Farley was presiding and sitting on the commercial list, he was the go-to judge. I don't think you can understand CCAA law and corporate and insolvency and restructuring without understanding Justice Farley's decisions. Jim is not shy. If he's got a view, um, he expresses the view. Not everybody agreed with the, what he said from the bench. One of the things that I think was forgotten by some of the critics was a simple reality. He took the period when most corporate lawyers are at their highest earnings, 17 years, and gave it to public service. We had a professor, Professor John Willis for tax administrative law. He was a great professor, close to his students, always available. But we wanted to do something meaningful. We decided it would be nice to have one of the classrooms named after John Willis. It was our corresponding responsibility to raise a half a million, or at least a half a million dollars. Jim took the lead, took the lead very aggressively. People we thought who had disappeared, either dead or living somewhere else, Jim found them. He is someone who is very concerned about a better world and the role of law and the justice system in making the world better. He could be fearlessly creative, he could be obstreperous, um, he rubbed some people the wrong way, but he got the job done. Twenty some odd years ago, Jim uh, presided on a control contest litigation. We argued the case all day Friday. Sunday morning, we get a, a call saying, I'm gonna fax, there was an email, so I'm gonna fax the decision. It was probably 30 or 40 pages, handwritten, single space on full scap. The first line was in Spanish, and it was uh, about Don Quixote. I didn't have to read the rest of it. I knew that we had lost the case. He served on the bench you know, with neither fear nor favor. I think always looking for constructive and fair outcomes. He brought a public interest approach to private commercial crises. And I think the country is hugely indebted to this man. Justice Farley is very, very smart. He's very good at picking through all sorts of complexity to the heart of the matter, and he's courageous. What Jim had to do um, in many of these restructurings, and Stelco was being, being one of the primary examples, is to interpret the CCAA, to push it, and in that way, he was brave. I think that spirit of fairness, of being constructive, of giving back and making a difference is a huge animating force for Jim Farley. And it's one reason why I'm so delighted that he's being honored by our law school.